commodities. Still looking at countries' economies, let's look at South Korea's economy. As its inflation has hit 24-year high. Consumer prices in South Korea rose 6% year-on-year in June 2022. This is the fastest pace since November 1998. A higher prices of in uh, industrial goods, services, agricultural products, and utility bills kept adding to inflationary pressures amid increasing raw material prices. Well, according to reports, the data followed a 5.4% increase in May and came in above expectations of a 5.9% gain. The country's inflation rate also held above the central bank's 2% target for the 15th consecutive month, keeping the pressure on the Bank of Korea to tighten policy further to curb price growth. Analysts are betting that the central bank will raise its policy rates in July by 50 basis points rather than the usual 25 basis points to arrest rising prices. The Bank of Korea raised its base rates by 25 basis points to 1.75% in May. This is the fifth rate increase since August 2021 and that signaled more rate hikes in the coming months. Well, before we move on to the commodity market and of course, business outlook in Nigeria, let's go for a breather. When we return, we will talk about the Nigerian Stock Exchange as well. Thank you for staying tuned. We're going straight into the commodity market and we begin with gold. Gold prices were subdued around $1,810 an ounce this morning, hovering close to its lowest level in five months as impending interest rate hikes from major central banks dampened bullion's appeal. Federal Reserve's policymakers cemented expectations for further monetary tightening, sign uh, signaling another 75 basis point rate hike in July to arrest surging prices. The European Central Bank is also expected to start raising interest rates in July and bringing, rates, uh, uh, bringing costs into positive territory in the third quarter. Meanwhile, tighter financial conditions across major economic, economies raised fears of a global recession, pushing in, investors towards the safety of the dollar and promoting a broad decline in com uh, commodity prices. Still talking about the commodity markets, we'll move on now to the agricultural markets. 
we'll be looking at palm oil that has hit its 40-week low. Well, according to data released this morning, palm oil decreased to a 40-week low of 4,213 Malaysian rignits uh, per tonne as supply is outpacing demand clouded by recession fears. Top palm oil producer in Indonesia proposed raising palm oil export quotas and is considering increasing mandatory levels of biodiesel in fuel mixed to prop, uh, to prop prices for farmers to reduce high domestic inventories. Indonesia has recently announced an export accelerate, acceleration scheme to ship at least 1 million tons of crude palm oil and derivatives and also reduce the maximum export trade, uh, tax trade and levy for crude palm oil to $488 per ton from $575 per ton to boost shipments. Well, in the meantime, in Malaysia, the production is expected to increase in the months ahead on higher crops. And as migrant uh, workers return, while exports for June fell between 10% and 13.4% from the same period in May, according to cargo surveyors. Well, now, let's look at businesses in Nigeria. The EU is set to invest $1.3 billion in Nigeria's agri sector. Well, the European Union has revealed its commitment to financially support the agricultural sector in Nigeria, assisting the African country to diversify its economy away from oil. Recall that Nigeria has been dependent on oil, which accounts for 90% foreign currency earnings, as well as contributing 7% to the company's gross domestic product. This had heavily impacted the country's revenue during the meltdown of the oil industry during the COVID-19 breakdown. Well, over the years, the government had talked about diversifying the economy to reduce the exposure of the economy to the oil industry. Right now, the EU intends to play a role in this path away from oil by providing $1.3 billion financing for different products in Nigeria that will include agricultural development, road network, and renewable energy, reducing dependence on fossil fuel, and managing climate change. Reports say the capital is part of the Green Deal initiative of the European Union and the funding will run until 2027, covering 57 projects. Well, still in Nigeria, the, Niger the National Pension Commission, the PENCOM, has disclosed that over 2,084 monthly pension payments have left the contributory pension scheme in the first quarter of 2022. Well, according to the commission in its first quarter report, it stated that the affected workers retired with less than 550,000 Naira in their retirement savings account with their respective pension fund administrators. They had therefore been removed or uh, refunded all their contributions into the scheme. Well, according to PENCOM's report, the 2,084 retirees whose RSA balance were 550,000 Naira or below were considered insufficient to procure programmed uh, withdrawal or retiree life annulment of a reasonable amount for an expect expected lifespan. Still talking about reports, let's look at the CBN report. Nigerian banks' total assets rose by 11.15 trillion naira in one year to 64.32 trillion naira at the end of April. That's according to the CBN's report. 
According to the figures released by the CBN's website, the assets of, central, of commercial banks rose from 53.17 trillion naira in the corresponding year of 2021 to 64.32 trillion naira in 2022, which shows 21% increase over the period. According to a personal statement from a member of the Monetary Policy Committee, Kingsley Obiora, the growth was driven by balances with CBN, banks, automobiles, and credits to the real sector of the economy. Sectors with the increased credit include manufacturing, consumer credit, general commerce, information and communication, and the agricultural sector. Well, we can't end Business 360 without looking at the Nigeria, uh, Nigerian capital market. Investors in the Nigerian capital market on, Wednesday, on Monday lost 20.60 billion naira following the dip in equity capitalization by minus 0.07% at the close of the day's business. The all share index was down by 38.22 basis points to close at 51,791.45. Fitson led the gainers, closing at 12 naira 30 kobo per share. Learn Africa also appreciated, closing at 2 naira 47 kobo per share. UPDC and corn oil value also appreciated to join the top gainers. Red Star Express share value dropped by 0 0.25 Kobo to end trading at 2 naira 50 Kobo from 2 naira 75 Kobo per share it's recorded the previous session. Alongside RT, Petisco, Cortez and Unity Bank all made the loser's chart. Altogether, investors traded 194.12 million shares worth 2 naira, uh, 2.82 billion naira in 4,899 deals at the end of the trading session. Well, on this note, we draw the curtain on Business 360 today. Join us again tomorrow for more information in the world of business. I remain Edidio Martin. Thanks for watching.